Rebecca, are you ready? Are we ready to take back our future and take back our lives? Because that is what this fight is all about. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for fighting for our lives and thank you for fighting for the generations to come because we are not going to give up. We are not going to give up on the fight to decarbonize our economy, to make sure that we live a sustainable and just and provide and, and have a life and an environment that provides for all people, not just the privileged few. They gave me two microphones, I'm not sure why. <laughs> Probably because I'm walking around so much. Um, I want to thank you all so much for joining us today because this is truly a call to organize. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to transition here. This works. <laughs> Um, I want to thank you all again so much for showing up because, once again, this is a call to organize. This is a call to reorganize and to make sure that we are fighting for a just economy, for a just society, a just environment, and a just future for the United States of America and the world. It was reported today that this weekend, for the first time in human history, we have reached atmospheric levels of carbon at 415 parts per million. This has never been seen in recorded human history. In fact, meteorologist Eric Holthos and journalists said simply about this measurement and development, we do not know a planet like this. The last time our planet hit 415 was in the Pliocene period. Oceans were 90 feet higher. Bacteria and diseases we have never seen before roamed the earth. Humans did not exist. We have never seen a planet like this. And a planet like this is exactly what we are going to get. And it is exactly what we are going to inherit from previous generations if we do not act positively now. That is the simple truth. So often, you know, when folks, particularly conservatives on both sides of the aisle, say, uh, when they say that calling for a Green New Deal is, quote, too much or too extreme or too radical, no middle ground, no middle ground is right. Because I'm always curious, but I'm always curious when they say that, oh, it's too much. What do they actually mean by that? Is 100% clean and renewable energy too much? No. Is fighting for dignified jobs that pay people enough to live too much? No. Is proposing a solution on the scale of the climate crisis to solve it too much? No. no. But let me tell you what's too much for me. Here's what's too much for me. What's too much for me is politicians looking and allowing babies' blood to get poisoned in Flint for corporate profits. That is what is too much for me. What's too much for me What's too much for me is coal barons coming up to Washington, D.C., demanding bailout after tax break, after bailout for themselves, and then not even paying their own miners' pensions and put their own miners' health care. That is what is too much for me. That is too much for me. What is too much for me 
is the fact that ExxonMobil knew exactly that climate change was real and man-made as far back as 1970, and instead of being part of the solution, they paid millions of dollars to lobby and lie and confuse the American public about it, endangering generations to come. That is too much for me. What is too much for me is the fact that in 1989, the year that I was born, the year that I was born, the year that many of us were born, and, and in years after and right before, that politicians were first informed by NASA, that Congress was first notified by NASA that climate change was going to threaten my life and everyone here's life to come, and they did nothing. That is too much for me. And I, and I will be damned if the same politicians who refused to act then are going to try to come back today and say we need a middle of the, the middle of the road approach to save our lives. That is too much for me. We cannot. We cannot and we will not accept anything less than a solution to save ourselves. And that's exactly what this is. You know, when we talk about the path forward, I wish that as a leader, I could give you comfort about our future. I wish that as a public servant, I can come here and tell you that everything's going to be all right. But I can't tell you that today because I'm not interested in lying to you. But frankly, there is no reason for us to be comfortable right now. We are at 415, 415. There is no reason for us to be comfortable. And I'm not here to guarantee to you that everything will be okay. But what I am here to say is that we must try. We must try. I am not here to tell you, I am not here to tell you that all Democrats are good and all Republicans are bad and that if you simply elect someone with a D next to their name that our problems will be solved. I'm not here to tell you that either. Because I've been in that chamber. I've been told by, from people on both sides of the aisle that we need to frack more, and that we be, need to build more pipelines, both sides of the aisle, which is why, but, th but that is why we need you. Because with your help, with your insistence, with your organizing, with your demands, with your voting, with your mobilizing a broader electorate than we have ever seen before in American history, we do not have to go down that path. Our history may be written, but our future is not. And we have every possibility in the world to change it. And cynicism about our future is exactly what the opposition wants. It's exactly what they want. They want you to think that it's too late. They want you to think that the future is pre-written. They want you to think that the power is too far imbalanced. And I'm here to tell you that all of those things are false. We are at a crossroads unlike any we have seen before. But the good thing is that the average everyday person has never been more powerful in human history than it is today. Never been more powerful.
between the, our abilities to educate ourselves, educate others, the abilities to win over our families, to have these conversations, to register and get people to the polls, to have people organize around issues, to elevate our collective consciousness about our racial history, about our, our, about our nation's history, about our science, about everything that is bringing us to this moment. We have never been more powerful and big money has never been weaker. And that is exactly why they are fighting so hard against the Green New Deal. We are at a precipice. We are at a critical precipice. And the reason why you hear constant disinformation targeting screaming, crying, storytelling about the Green New Deal is because they know how vulnerable they are. If they didn't, they wouldn't be doing this. If it really was just a silly little fairy tale, then they would have just let it rock. But they know, they know the electoral and the knowledge and, and the actual organizing energy that is behind this. Because no one wants to leave a, a, a poor and, and worse earth for their children to inhabit, not a single human being. And for years of denial and years of abdication of leadership and responsibility, we finally are stepping into that void, taking our future for ourselves, and we will change this country, and we will change the future to be more just. Because the logic that we are fighting against right now, this is not just about putting solar panels on our homes. We are fighting against a logic that says, Poisoning and giving communities cancer is okay if an oil company can post a Q1 profit. And we're here to say no more. What we are fighting against, what we are fighting against is a logic that says it is okay to pay someone less than they need to live. And we are here to say no more. And what we are also fighting against is a logic that says we can extract enough off of human life and our environmental resources to the point of destroying our own humanity just to post profit no more. We will not accept that anymore. We cannot accept that anymore. So lastly, what I'm here to tell you all is that while I am not here to, to assuage all of our fears, and while I'm not here to bring you comfort, what I am here to do is point to the possibility of our future. And if we act in that possibility, every day that we act in that possibility, we will have hope. And that is where hope will come from. Hope will come from our ability to act Hope will come from our small actions every single day. And hope will come from us refusing to settle for less. Because for so long, this political uh, paradigm that we have operated in has relied on us settling for less in order to, quote, win. And what that logic has gotten us what that logic has gotten us to say settle for less in order to win caused us to lose a thousand seats until recently the House, the Senate, and the presidency. And the idea that if we continue on that logic that we will somehow win after years and years of losing is the definition of insanity. We cannot allow ourselves to be bullied out of our values anymore. And we do not have to be scared by demanding a living wage, by demanding health care for all people as we transition to an economy that is decarbonized, sustainable, and just for every American. But again, I cannot do this but you can, we can together. It is going to take the, a level of organizing that we have never seen, but that is what we have been doing. 
we've already been pursuing levels of organizing that we have never seen. People say what is possible in electoral politics. People will vote for this. People won't vote for that. The turnout for the 2018 midterm primary was 19%. 19%. And everyone is talking about what is electorally possible. But here's another statistic. In New York's 14th congressional district, in that primary, we expanded the electorate by 68% over the last off-year midterm election. People will vote if there is something worth voting for. And a Green New Deal is exactly what that is. Thank you all so much. Let's organize together. Don't settle for less. And we are going to march to this future together. Thank you very much.